Good evening and welcome back. In tonight's episode, we're going to tackle a question that keeps coming up in the comments and direct messages on how we get the Z270, H270, and subsequent 170 ASUS boards to work with more than four cards stable. Additionally, folks that have gotten their six card rigs going still seems that there's been some stability issues and it's very frustrating when using this board. What we want to do through this video walkthrough is take you through the steps that we go through to ensure our rigs are absolutely rock solid. Building rigs can be very frustrating, but all of us sharing our experiences, answering each other's questions helps the community grow. Now let's switch gears and take a look at the very first thing that we do when getting the motherboard out of the box. We first mount it to a rig, add the processor memory, and install the PSU. We do not put any cards nor risers in the rig at this time. We go ahead and plug in the keyboard, mouse, and an HDMI cable that's plugged into a TV or a monitor into the onboard port on the motherboard. Again, no risers and no cards at this point. Once you boot up, you'll see that since there's no drives installed, the motherboard will perform its off-screen post, its power on self-test. The lights that you see that are running in the back, which is its startup sequence and it'll launch you straight into the BIOS after that. At this point, you want to make sure that you go ahead and plug in the Ethernet cable, then go into the advanced screen of the BIOS by pressing F7. You can use your keyboard or mouse to navigate over there. Once in the advanced screens, you want to move over to the Tools menu and select ASUS EZ Flash 3 Utility and hit Enter. Then select Via Internet and click Next. It will want you to reboot by clicking OK. Go ahead and let it do this. It'll power recycle one more time and take you back into the BIOS. Reselect the via internet and hit next. Choose DHCP for the connection type and then say OK to the latest BIOS. This will now download the latest BIOS into the system memory and prompt you to say OK to updating. Now this process will take roughly about two minutes. Once finished, hit OK. Then allow the machine to reboot again. Now it'll go to a black screen for about 10 to 15 seconds or up to 10 to 15 seconds. This is normal and OK. Then we'll display a message at the upper left hand corner that is updating. Then it will reboot one last time and put you back at a startup screen, giving you a basic note that the BIOS was updated and to hit enter to go back into the BIOS menu. This now allows you the ability to change the critical settings that you'll need to make the board stable with 6 plus GPUs. Now once back in the BIOS, you must hit F7 again to go in advanced mode. Then navigate over to the advanced section. Under there, go into system agent SA configuration item. Then down to DMI OPI configuration. In there, choose DMI Max Link Speed drop-down and select Gen 2. Navigate one page back and down to the last option, PEG Port Configuration. Now in this section, choose the PCIe X 16 underscore 1 Link Speed drop-down and choose Gen 2. Then under the PCI 16 underscore 2 Link Speed, the same drop-down, choose Gen 2 in there too, just as we have on the screen here. Lastly, choose PCI spread spectrum clocking and choose disable. After that, go back two menus by selecting the arrow in the upper left hand corner, hit enter twice to take you back to the main advanced menu. Now go down to the PCH configuration and select it. Once in there, go down to PCI express configuration and hit enter. Once within this section, as you've done before in the other areas, hit the drop down and choose Gen 2. Now after that, you wanna go back to the main advanced menu again, going back twice, and go down and look at onboard device configuration. Now since we don't use audio in this, we go ahead and disable the HD audio controller, then back to the advanced menu. Then you wanna go down to the APM, which is the advanced power management configuration, and choose restore AC power loss. You wanna choose that to power on. Now this allows if there's a power outage for whatever reason, that once the power is restored, the motherboard will detect power again and trigger the same mechanism it uses for the wake on land feature, which triggers a restart even after a while. Lastly, navigating to the boot section, choose next boot after AC power loss. Then select the drop down and say, tell that to be a fast boot. Then update the post delay time to zero seconds, which makes the computer boot as fast as possible. Lastly, and one of the most important selections you will make in this BIOS is under the same section in boot, choose the above 4G decoding dropdown and choose enable. Now after that, navigate over to the exit, choose save and reset, and the screen will show you a punch list of all the items that you have just changed. Select OK and let the machine power off. Now normally, from this point, we would pull the power from the PSU and then start installing the riser and GPUs. Now hopefully this helps you all get moving forward with your mining rig, especially if you have this board. This should hopefully take some of the guesswork out of your attempts with this series of boards 
and build back up your confidence that you're doing it right. Drop us a line if you want another type of video like this for another motherboard type. Now while a lot of the settings are the same in motherboards, the basic common theme is, is you want to make sure that your PCI Express ports are set to the Generation 2 and you got to make sure that the 4G decoding has been selected. Now let's switch gears real quick and show you what's coming up next this week within BBT. We're going to do a vlog catch up and try to get that out tomorrow. We've had a very busy last few days and have collected tons of video. We want to quickly roll through that collection and wrap it into a single vlog video later on tomorrow. And yes, we did some serious, serious shopping for you guys. Additionally, we have a live stream targeted for this weekend. Again, Saturday evening around 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. In this one, you're absolutely going to want to see the sick build that we put together for you. How about a 14 GPU monolith where red meets green and a merger of giants? We're talking 7 RX 580s and 7 1080 GTX NVIDIA cards on a single frame using dual boards targeted for Zcash and Ethereum. Now, in our early testing, we're talking cranking out nearly 500 souls on each one of these 1080 GTXs, smashing through 3,400 souls holding up on one PSU. Now, as I've said many times, let's get into this. Now, I want to thank you guys for your continued patronage and your participation in the comments. Many of you guys have been smashing through those Amazon affiliate links, and we really appreciate it. We're here to bring you some of the best content coming out, and you know we'll be front and center when Vega hits the streets. Lastly, and in closing, thanks for bearing with us as we deploy our new website at bitsbytrippin.com. It should be fully live in the next few weeks as we transition it from the blog to an actual proper website. Now do us a solid, like, subscribe, and share this video on the forums and the other places that you visit. This was your host, Carter. We're signing off and stay tuned.